Hey everyone, it's Sammy Caps. How you doing? In today's video, we're gonna cover a topic on my experience through the PTR and what I foresee are potential problems that are gonna come to the surface during season four. Now, specifically, I wanna talk about the good things that I see happening in season four and some of the pitfalls that we may come up against and I believe are going to surface when Diablo 4 comes with Season 4 on May 14th. Now, let's start off with the good. First of all, the good news is the increased XP in all the world tiers. Basically, all the wor world tiers have received a 50% buff starting from world tier 2. What does that mean? That means that players are going to be able to level up much quicker which is a massive bump to the speed that players are going to be able to reach level 100 so that's a good thing now a lot of feedback that i've heard and read is around the drop in affixes and items so a rare item will receive two affixes now and a legendary will receive three affixes and a lot of people are griping over that I personally haven't felt a difference in the loss of those affixes because for the most part, the unneeded affixes, you know, the damage on Tuesday stuff is gone. Now, I didn't feel a huge impact of that because the Codex of Power is available to us right away. So there's a lot of aspects that we can incorporate into our game and our, into our character that really makes us stronger. Now, at the beginning, yes, they are the lower powered aspects. However, it still provides a, a, a nice bump to your player. And to be honest with you, I didn't feel the difference. Now, what still is a huge question mark for me is obviously the huge removal of the damage reduction in the game. That one, I'm still very interested to see how that plays out in Season 4. Because as we know, we do not have the theme of Season 4. Now, it's been leaked that it's going to have a possible Iron Wolves theme. And only time will tell. But the point is, this damage reduction removal in the game where it's no longer in abundance and able to be put on our gear. And there's only, depending on which class you're playing, there's little tidbits here and there of where you can add damage reduction. So for the most part, it's been removed. We're gonna see how that plays out in season four, but that's not the point of this video. What I really wanted to hone in on and what I've been testing all week is really this Season four is the is the season of itemization. So that's my focus. And I want to talk about what I've talked about in previous videos. And that is this itemization loop, as I've called it, this gameplay loop of what we are now going to be experiencing in season four. I think it's a good thing. I think I've said it a million times since we've known about this new addition to Diablo 4. It's a much needed step. It provides a great start and foundation to to putting itemization in Diablo 4. So I've been testing that thoroughly in season in sorry in the PTR testing, and there's some gaping holes in the system that I think really over time, as players season four comes and players start to experience it and they go from grinding and leveling the game to eventually hitting the higher levels to eventually getting to level 100. And this is where Diablo 4 recommends you start playing that end game. And that is the pit and master working. Now, that's, there's a lot of prongs to that. So let's start with the tempering and master working and i've done videos on these topics so i'm going to assume you know what i'm talking about when i'm referring to tempering and master working because i don't want to repeat myself if you're not aware of tempering and master working go back 
and watch some of my older videos and you'll see a breakdown of it. But basically tempering is us being able to put affixes onto our gear and weapons through learning the recipes. They're called tempering manuals. They're found in the game. There's 262 tempering manuals, tempering recipes. So you need to find them. Once you find them, you literally just right click, you learn the recipe and therefore whatever's in that tempering manual and there's offensive tempering manuals, there's defensive tempering manuals, there's utility defensive, uh, utility tempering manuals, sorry. And each manual has a list of affixes that you can learn. And in essence, you can try to put it onto your gear vis-a-vis -vis the tempering uh, through the uh, blacksmith, okay? So that's the first step. And that could, you could literally start doing that right away there's master working now when it comes to master working you can't master work a piece of item unless it's already been tempered so you 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 can't master work an item that you have not put affixes onto you need to temper uh, a piece of gear a weapon a piece of jewelry in order to be able to master work it and very quickly master working is there's 12 ranks in master working. Every time you rank up that gear that you're master working, you get a five, all the affixes on the gear that you're master working, get a 5% bump in power and whatever. It gets a 5% boost. Um, but at rank four, eight, and 12, one random affix that's on the gear that you're master working gets a 25% bump. Uh, and it's random. Now, when you're master working, you require this material, which is only attainable through the pit. The only way you're going to get master working materials is through the pit. Okay. Now, when it comes to master working, here is my very first pitfall. And that is the fact that, and, and this, what I'm going to mention is going to tie with what I foresee as the bigger problem and a gaping hole in the current itemization that we have been told this is how it's going to work. And um, so master working. The thing is, when it comes to master working, like I said, level rank four, eight and 12, this is where you ding the item and one random affix gets 25 percent of a bump. OK, now the first four ranks, there's what's called a success rate when you're master working an item. Right. So when you select uh, when you're when you're ranking up the item rank one, two, three and four, the success rate is 100 percent. So you're guaranteed to get the rank up when you go to rank five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 and 12. The success rate drops to 70, 60, 50, 40, all the way down to 10%. Okay. So you no longer are 100% going to ding every time you want to rank up. You're actually going to fail and you're going to fail a lot. That at least was my experience. Now, when the good news is when you do fail, the success rate bumps up. So it increases your chance. However, get used to the fact of failing because it's going to happen. So again, I'm no way saying this is a problem. It should be a hundred percent and you should be able to only rank up 12 times with no failures. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying this process right now creates a couple of problems. Number one, the amount of clicking you need to do when you're ranking up to the higher tier, so rank five, six, all the way to 12, with the failing, going and failing, success, like it's just, you're, you're literally gonna be in front of the blacksmith for like 40 minutes, half an hour. That's number one. So if there's any way they can expedite that, that'd be great. They do have a skip when it comes to, when you hit masterwork, you can skip the animation and the, and, and the delay in, in showing you whether it's successful or not. Um, so you can't skip, but 
there's still a lot of clicking. I don't know what the answer is to that, but there's got to be a better, more efficient way instead of spending 35 minutes in front of the blacksmith. So number one. Number two, when you're failing so much, and you will fail a lot, the amount of materials that you are consuming is really, really a lot. So you then have to go back into the pit and grind more, get more materials, go back, and and, and that's the circle. Now, I don't have a problem with that, but remember this issue that I've highlighted right now, because when I get to talking about the pit, I'm gonna take you back to this issue of the materials that you're gonna need, specifically the three that I showed you that are required for master working. The UI with the master working and the amount of clicking that, I don't have a suggestion for that, but something has to be done when it comes to that. Now, I mentioned the pit, okay? The pit has 200 levels. All right. Now it's been my experience, but it's been highly reported by a lot of other players that there really is no purpose once you reach level uh, level 100 in the pit. So the 100 to 200 level, really, there's no incentive to do it. There's no increased rewards. You're not getting increased materials you know, the materials for the master working. Really, it becomes a thing of, you're just gonna flex, hey, I did a tier 200 uh, a pit. Because it seems like there is a drop off in the materials and the purpose of doing a level two, like a level 101 to a level 200 pit. And I wanna suggest the following. Here is a chart that I drew up. And as you can see, so on the left is the rewards, the difficulty, and the fun factor in whatever we're doing. This is specific for the pit. And as you can see on the bottom axis, there's every level of the pit. So it goes 25, 50, 75, 100, all the way to 200. Now, as you can see on the chart, the reward and difficulty and fun continues to escalate as you get through all the levels of the pit. And once you hit level 100 in the pit, it seems like it just is flatlining. Really, there's no bump in the rewards. There's no bump in the difficulty. It, the difficulty is little increment. Not You don't even feel it, to be honest with you. If you can complete a level 100, uh, if you complete the pit at level 100, a lot of people have reported that you could also complete a level 200. The, the, the difference in difficulty is very minor. So when I step back and I hear that and I feel it, I start to think then what's going to end up happening is players are going to recognize that. They're going to hear this because people are going to create content around this and their friends may tell them, hey, don't waste your time on doing a level 200. It's the same as a level 100 pit. Just grind the 100s or the 101s, right? This is going to come out. So then why have... 200 levels, if 101 to 200 doesn't gain and net any difference to you. So I'm suggesting that they need to scale up and that's the green line where now it's not as steep from zero to 100, but at least it's higher than the current and what we're experiencing in the pit where it flatlines. Somehow they need to amp up the rewards, the difficulty, which will mean more fun and actually provide more purpose to do a level 100 to 200, okay? So they need to amp up the rewards and difficulty, which will equate to a purpose of doing the higher tiers in the pit. And this 
if they do this, okay, and I'm not saying it has to be astronomical, maybe just thinking out loud, a uh, tier 100 to a tier 125, you bump up the master working materials by 10%. And then 130 to 150, the crafting materials are bumped up 20% and so on and so on. So players are feeling the difference and it gives them a purpose to do it. And it'll give meaning for players wanting to attain and aspire to doing the higher tiers because this flat line, it exists. Nobody's gonna be doing the higher tiers other than the ones that wanna flex and say, hey, look at me, I did a 200 pit. That's not the point of it, right? So I also think this change in the pit where you're amping up the rewards difficulty in the higher tiers of the pit, I think it will also add value to the end game loop that I talked about. Why? Because it gives purpose. So the higher you go in the pit, the more rewards you're getting, the more difficult it's getting. So you need to make you, you need to make damn sure your character is strong enough to handle it. Now, the pit is a recommended level 100 activity, right? So this is end game stuff. And we're going to we're going to need the master working materials, which we can only get through the pit. And we're, we burn through them quick. So this change in the pit where it's no longer flatlining and actually a little bit of an, of an increase provides the resources that we need in order to offset all the failing master working. And I didn't mention when it comes to master working, what also is an RNG is which random affects it bumps up 25%. Maybe it's one we don't want and you could brick an item and you have to re-roll and reset the master working right? Which again, you now have to burn through all that material again. So this little change in the pit where you're bumping it up at the higher tiers only facilitates a better master working process. Now, this model can be applied also to nightmare dungeons where I see another problem. And this is a problem that's already existing in the game. And that is the fact that on Nightmare Dungeons, this graph, you can literally replace for Nightmare Dungeons. So Nightmare Dungeons, really, we do Nightmare Dungeons. Number one, in the beginning, you had to, but now you're gonna do Nightmare Dungeons because, well, loot. This is, uh, Nightmare Dungeons is also a place where the tempering manuals drop in my personal experience and all the testing I've done all week in the PTR, I've had the highest drop rate of temper manuals in Nightmare Dungeons. At least that's been my experience. I don't know if that's done on purpose, uh, but I can't find any literature on, yes, here are the spots you need to do in order to get temper manuals. Uh, there's no written information on that it just talks about the tempering manuals it doesn't say where to get them now some people have said you just need to play all the game and i have had tempering manuals drop in regular gameplay but the highest drop rate has been in nightmare dungeons for me during my ptr testing anyway nightmare dungeons as we know when you complete a nightmare dungeon level uh, tier 41 Tier 41 and above Nightmare Dungeons, that's where 925 item power gear starts to drop, right? So players, obviously, they, they want the 925 gear. It's tier 41, but that's not the point that I want to highlight. I want to highlight the fact that when it comes to uh, one of the other main reasons you're going to want to do Nightmare Dungeons is, of course, Glyph XP. We all want our glyphs to be level 21. In order to do that, you need to grind Nightmare Dungeons. So it becomes of, okay, how fast? What's the fastest method to level up glyphs, the XP, right? So obviously the higher tiers. Now, when it comes to Nightmare Dungeons, optimal glyph XP 
they say is around level 70, 75, 80 ish. That's where you really, when you're hitting those high tiers, 70 to 80, let's say, this is where you're getting the optimal XP in the game. So players are going to want to aspire to that and they're going to want to run tier 70, 80 Nightmare Dungeons. Okay, well, Sammy, what about level 90 Nightmare Dungeon? It goes all the way to 100, right? <clears throat> Again, when you get past the 80 to 100, there really is no huge benefit to running those Nightmare Dungeons because the incremental Glyph XP you get 80 plus all the way to 100 on Nightmare Dungeon isn't worth the extra time you need in order to run that Nightmare Dungeon if you follow. So players are going to stick and do just level 70, level 80 um, Nightmare Dungeons. You're still getting 925 item power. You still have the potential to, for temper manuals to drop. You're still getting awesome Glyph XP. So I can do level 70, level 80 Nightmare Dungeons much quicker than I can do a level 100 uh, Nightmare Dungeon over and over. So, And for that little bump, I'm going to do level 70, 75, level 80. I still get all the loot. I still get all the temper manuals, etc., etc. So again, no incentive to those last 20 tiers of Nightmare Dungeons. Why do it? I can run more at a lower level and get the same outcome faster. Um, so it's these gaping holes in Nightmare Dungeons and in the pit that really bring me back to this, where the drop-off, the you need to eliminate the drop-off. You need to incentivize players to attain and aspire to the top level content that you have. Why have 200 levels in the pit where there really is no incentive to do it after level 100? Why have tier 100 nightmare dungeons when you can stick around the 70, 80 tier nightmare dungeon and have the same outcome quicker? What's the point? Cut it off at 80 then. Cut the pit off at 100 levels. You follow what I'm saying? But I think they could utilize these holes and implement mechanics in the game that will help facilitate mm -hmm. and make the itemization loop that I keep talking about much better. So add incentives to these higher tiers in the pit in Nightmare Dungeons where, again, I'm not saying they got to triple the drop rate and, and we have all the master working material we need for 20 characters. That's not what I'm saying. But even, even little incremental steps would provide so much value in this itemization loop that I keep talking about. So to me, these are, these are gaping holes in the current format that I foresee are gonna to come to the surface and are gonna be issues. So these are the things that I think are gonna come out of season four. Now, we don't know what the seasonal theme is gonna be. We know that it's potentially a Iron Wolves theme, but maybe we're gonna get some XP bumps through that mechanic as in past seasons. So there are still question marks here, but at the end of the day, I don't see the seasonal theme changing these gaping holes that exist in the pit, Nightmare Dungeons, and the Master Working. Three core elements of the Diablo 4 gameplay and three core elements of this itemization loop that I keep talking about. Now, yes, I understand there's the boss ladder and there's the torment bosses and there's a lot of other, and the hell tides, beautiful. The hell tides are amazing, which by the way, obviously everybody's gonna be doing the hell tide strategy when it comes to leveling. It, it has been shown and proven that that is the best method of leveling up quickly. 
But so there's a lot of good things that season four is going to bring us. But in light of the theme this week through the PTR testing and providing feedback, I wanted to do this video because these, I, I foresee these problems raising its ugly head and I think they should be addressed. And I honestly think what I'm recommending about increasing the rewards, increasing the difficulty, that'll increase the fun and an increase and it'll give us purpose. I don't think those are major to do's. I actually think they're really quick fixes and good fixes. Anyway, let me know what you think. What do you what what has been your experience through the PTR? Do you agree with what I said? If you do, let me know, do you have any recommendations that you think would address these gaping holes in the current itemization loop that's going to exist in season four? And or do you disagree with me? You're OK with how everything is. What's your experience been? I would love to hear it. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. And if you could like, comment and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. And if you can also do me a solid and hit that bell, so you get notified exactly when I drop content. This way you don't miss one video of mine. That would also mean the world to me. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time. Take care. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.